right, today we're taking a look at Google PubSub. So this is a Google Cloud service that allows you to build a message event-driven uh, architecture using publisher subscriber semantics. So you can see this is the intro page. And if you go to what is PubSub, this has a really good overview of what you can do with PubSub. And practically speaking, one of the more interesting things you can do is you can use this as a mechanism to connect your microservices together. Now, why this is really powerful is you don't have to couple your services together with synchronous API calls now because you can use asynchronous API calls and queuing in PubSub to basically decouple your microservices and the different layers of your application. So if you have a layer of your application that has to scale um, you know, in one set of parameters, but you have another layer that you wanna scale differently, you can use PubSub potentially as a kind of a buffer to control this flow between one layer or one set of services and a different set of services, right? Um, on top of that, also gives you certain other aspects of resiliency, like the ability to replay these events, the ability to trace these events, um, and just build an overall better architecture, right? So an example where you can take advantage of this in Google Cloud is with Google Cloud Run. Um, and here's an example where I have a Cloud Run application. And in this triggers tab, you can see that we can create an event arc trigger. And when we create this trigger, we can pick an event source and we can pick, for example, Cloud PubSub and select a topic, right? Now, I don't have any topics in here in this environment, but once you do this, you can select a service URL path and that service URL path will be some application entry point in your Google Cloud Run container. And you can basically trigger that with an event from Google Cloud Run. So this becomes a very tidy way, really handy way to connect the different microservices that you have running in Google Cloud Run without having to make a synchronous connection and without having to deal with, for example, service discovery, right? So if you don't use this mechanism, you have to figure out a way that you're going to do service discovery within Google Cloud Run um, and there's various ways to do that, but this mechanism allows you to really decouple the various microservices you have, and then of course, all the benefits of PubSub as well. Okay, so if we take a look and we wanna test this locally, Google does provide a local emulator that you can use, um, and it's part of the uh, G Cloud, so you can use gcloud emulator pubsub, um, but you need to have Java installed, right? So a alternative way to get the local emulator for doing development or testing is to use a Docker image. So there's a repository here in GitHub. Uh, Marcel Corso has built a gcloud pubsub emulator which I think internally is probably just using gcloud command and you have a Docker container um, and it has all of the instructions for starting up the Docker container and also how you can start the container with a specific set of topic IDs and subscriptions on those topic IDs, okay? So what we're gonna take a look at is how to take advantage of this container, uh, this Docker container to do local development. And we're going to build a .NET 6 producer and a .NET 6 consumer and see what this looks like when we build this type of application um, on top of Google Cloud, um, Google Cloud PubSub, okay? Now, I am working on a MacBook M1. So if you're using an M1, uh, we will need to add another library as we're working with um, uh, with PubSub is we'll have to get this uh, gRPC Core M1 library published by uh, published by uh, Inari, 
Okay, so we'll see how we put uh, Einar Ingbrinston. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, so let's try to put this together and see how it goes. All right, so first, GPS, we'll just call it Google Pub Sub. So we're just going to instantiate a really simple console application here. And while we're here, we will add the package for uh, Google Cloud dot uh, sub uh, v1. Perfect, I already had it, so that's perfect. And now what we want to do is we want to do grab this gRPC core one as well, okay? So you can build it from source if you want, but in our case, we will just grab this here, okay? So here. So if you don't add this, you'll get a small error um, that uh, can't find the gRPC uh, native library. Um, so this package takes care of that for M1 platforms only, okay? Now we're going to go up a level and create our subscriber. And do the same thing here. Add our pub sub. Whoop. Let's do new console. Pub sub. And M1. Okay. So now we have our project with our publisher and our subscriber, okay? Now, if you have the Docker image already, as I have, we just need to start that Docker image, okay? So when we start this Docker image, uh, we can just take this command here and run it as is. So let's grab this. Okay. And so we'll put it in here. And if we take a look at this, uh, we'll see here this first part, pub sub project one. This is the project. And if you look at the documentation, this has to be here. Then this is our project name and then our first subscription topic and subscription, okay? So we don't need all of these. We can just break it down. Uh, we'll call our project here, um, GPS demo, and we'll call this test pub and test sub, okay? So once we have this, we take this, and we can run it. And because I'm on a M1, it's going to start it with, um, you can see it starts it as AMD64, but it still works. And with these parameters, it automatically creates the project and creates the topic and creates the subscription, okay? So, Now we are ready to write our publisher and our subscriber. So we'll put our publisher here on the left and we have our subscriber here on the right, okay? Starting publisher. Okay. So if we go to 
we come back here to the documentation, you can see um, we have to set this uh, pub sub emulator host uh, environment variable when we start this up, all right? So all we'll do here is we'll just grab this. Okay. Now, if we look at the documentation from Google here in PubSub, you can see accessing environment variables in all languages except for Java and C Sharp. If you have a PubSub emulator host as described, you're all set. But in C Sharp and Java client libraries, you do have to do a little bit of extra work to get this to work correctly. You have to set this uh, emulator detection equal to emulator detection dot emulator for production, okay? So what we can do now is we can basically take this code um, exactly as is. So we'll take it bit by bit here, okay? So we'll take this bit here. Publish your service. Okay. Google Pub Sub. All right. So first we instantiate our publisher service and we also need our project ID and topic ID, right? So our project ID is GPS demo. And our topic ID equals, um, let's see what our topic was here. Our topic is test pub, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so now we have our project and our topic ID. We can grab this. Okay, and this will create our topic. In fact, we don't need to create our topic um, because it's already been created for us, right? So the next piece of this is that we can start publishing on it, right? So we can create a uh, publisher here. Okay. We create our publisher, right? Now we have our topic name, we create our publisher. Uh, you'll notice that we have this with emulator detection set up, right? And now we can publish and shut down, okay? Done, right? On the other side, we want to do the same thing and we can grab this, put that there. And here it's a little bit different because we are going to be using the subscription name, right? So here we will grab this. And you can see here on this side, we need the subscription ID. So we're gonna change this. to test sub, right? And now we also need to grab our subscriber service. So here we need to grab this. All right, so here we do also need the topic name. So let's grab this. We do need the topic name here as well. So let's grab this topic name, and then we will need this. Okay, so on one side now we have our publisher, on the other side we have our subscriber, right? Um, the other thing we will need is that once we uh, once we start the subscriber, right, once we have this, we can instantiate this. This is the next chunk of code that we want here. 
Okay. And oh, we also need to instantiate the subscriber here. Okay. So here we've create we don't actually we don't need to create the subscription because the subscription's already been created for us, so we don't need this. Right? The subscription's already been created for us, so that means that we may also uh, we may also not need this topic name, right? Because we already have the subscription created for us down here when we started the container. All right, so now this looks a lot simpler. We have the subscriber service, just like we have the publisher service. We have the subscription name, just like we have the topic name. And then we have the subscriber, the analog to our publisher over here, okay? And now we just need to start the We just need to start the subscriber and we will start to receive messages, okay? So on this side, we're going to send a message. The message can just be a string. In this case, hello, pup sub. And on this side, uh, we're going to receive the message, okay? So we can dot not run. Let's start our subscriber. All right. And now, our publisher. Beautiful. So you can see in this case, we exited immediately, right? Um, that's because here, as soon as we receive the message, we do this stop async and we exit this loop. All right, so this is great if you're just testing the send and receive, but if you're building an application that's going to be longer running or you wanna try this out interactively, we have to make some small modifications to both sides of this so that we can uh, capture the input from the publisher side, receive the input from the subscriber side, all right? So first thing we're going to do, we're going to just print out a message, okay? Type a message and press enter to send. Type quit to exit. Okay, and we'll just add a line here. Okay, and here we'll just do a infinite loop while true. Okay, and what we want to do is, number one, is we are going to move this line here, uh, shut down async, pass here, and we're going to move this line into here, and we're going to send our text, okay? So we're gonna send the text from this side to that side. Now, the only caveat here is that, let's do this, okay. If to lower invariant equals equals quit. If we get the quit message, what we want to do is we're going to break out of this loop and we will shut down here, okay? But otherwise, we are going to send this message over. Um, we can also do a console write line here. Oops. And here, we're going to just write this out and send this over, okay? Um, now, uh, on this side, what we want to do, on the receiver side, what we want to do is that if we, we only want to exit here, if we, um, we actually only want to stop the subscriber, if we could get the quit message, okay? 
So here, what we will do is, okay, if, okay, if message data equals equals quit. So message data dot two UTF string. Okay, if we get the quit message. then we will exit, okay? So here, now let's try this, okay? All right, so our subscriber has started and we will start our publisher. Okay, so forgot to save this and we're going to exit and try this again build and try it again. All right, perfect. So now we have a prompt here to type a message and it should show up on our subscriber side. So really cool, right? Now we have a local emulator sitting in a Docker container um, and we have our publisher and subscriber. Now, if you wanted to take this to the next level, you can put together a Docker Compose file and bring up basically a, a whole local cluster to do testing of microservices, you know, whatever architecture you're building with PubSub, you can now do this locally. And even better, you can do it with .NET, you can do it on an M1 uh, MacBook Pro, right? So let's try shutting it down here. Fantastic. So this repository and all of the links and resources I will put in the description for the video and the repository itself will also have links to all the resources in case you wanna do the same exercise. Um, it's really straightforward, really easy to use. The Google documentation, you know, there's some spots of it are a little bit iffy, uh, but really easy to get started and build a very simple event-driven uh, microservice type playground on your local machine, whether you are using Windows, Mac, uh, or Linux, all right? So let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, hope you enjoyed this video.